Hello, welcome back. I'm Statman Dave, and today we're going to be looking at Julian Nagelsmann RB Leipzig in Tactics Explained. Make sure to subscribe if you're new and like that goddamn video. Anyway, let's get this party started. Today we're going to be looking at Nagelsmann's tactics and why RB Leipzig are the most tactical team in the history of football. How could you describe Nagelsmann's RB Leipzig? An ultra fluid and flexible structured footballing side. A modern side capable of holding possession and moving their opponents around, as well as pressing with some such intensity. Each player on the pitch is required to have a great technical skills with the ability to take the ball at any time paired with dogged work rate you should expect from any German team off the ball. But how has Nagelsmann set up RB Leipzig? The German tactician has used a combination of three and four man defences, both adhering to his key principles of play, using the balls to move their opponents around before finding a pass in between the lines, aggressive pressing traps out wide when their opponent is in possession, a stopper cover model when looking to win the ball back, fluid rotation of positions and creating from low crosses and attacking with five players. A sign of an excellent coach is when their principles of play can be seen independent of shape and you get that when you watch RB Leipzig. Not only did RB Leipzig play cracking football but they've got some great shirts. Not only this home kit that's absolutely beautiful, their Champions League kit this season is an absolute banger. If you want to check out any of those shirts, kit bag, I've got a link in the description below so go and check that out and use the code DAVE10 to get 10% discount. First let's take a look at a three at the back setup. The beauty of Nagelsmann's sides is that they're very hard to read and to define his setups with one system is very tricky. The system depends on which players are holding each position within the shape at that moment. But let's start with defence. With a three-man defence, RB Leipzig tend to defend in a compact 5-3-2. They look to counter-press in an aggressive manner before dropping back into this shape. Nagelsmann likes his strikers to block off passing lanes into midfield, stopping their opponents from building from that area. So maybe it's better to describe their defensive shapes with a zero, i.e. a 5-3-2-0. When in their defensive shape, they set up pressing traps. A pressing trap is an area of the pitch that is targeted with an aggressive press when their opponents do a specific action. Nagelsmann likes to force his opponents to play wide, so he can use the touchline, narrow his shape and press high. In the 3-5-2, a trap can be set and then triggered when their opponent plays the pass out wide to fullback. When the trap has already been set, the narrow shape allows Leipzig to overload that side of the pitch. They then pounce with a wing back who's usually the first player to engage, supported by the side striker and of course a central midfielder. This three-man unit will hunt the ball back relentlessly in a pack, covering passing lanes to funnel the ball where they want it to go and usually forcing the opponent into a mistake, thus winning the ball back. Nagelsmann is a pragmatic manager, meaning his defensive shape and pressing traps are dependent on how their opponents are building. For example, if they play through defensive midfield, he'll set a trap up centrally by inviting them to play through his strikers before one of the central midfielders is jumping onto the number six after a bad touch or receiving the ball with a back to goal, looking to win the ball high and then counter directly. If the press is beaten with a pass, ball carry or long ball, RB adopt an aggressive stopper cover model. The stopper aggressively looks to win the ball back with the cover player sitting on the diagonal looking to intercept the next pass or becoming the aggressor on the next line. This principle is maintained in midfield and with the three-man defence with usually the middle centre-back playing as the stopper. Again this principle is maintained with a back four. On to possession. As we mentioned, Leipzig used the ball to move their opponents around before finding that pass to break the lines, be it a pass into one of the strikers' feet, a ball carried through the lines, or a passing combination with a third man run. The key to this is creating passing options on the diagonal. This is created by a U maintained in midfield and attack. With a three man defence, this is either created by a single pivot with two high central midfielders, or a two man pivot as a base with a striker dropping off and a central midfielder moving to number 10. This again is a slight difference in shape with exactly the same personnel, which gives Nagelsmann the ability to switch in-game, making him such a devastating tactician if he identifies a weakness or a vulnerability. Another interesting side of Nagelsmann's side is the use of a target man, something that you wouldn't expect in a possession-based side. Nagelsmann uses a target man as an out ball. If his team are under pressure, they can play long to a big centre forward. In Leipzig, he has one of the best in Yusuf Poulsen, a player with the potential to be one of the most complete forwards in Europe. 
He can hold the ball, flick it onto Verne, works incredibly hard and has the composure 1v1. Not only is Nagelsmann a target man and out ball, but also a passing option to break the lines. A direct ball onto the striker's feet can be laid off to a runner, and that again is how his teams have broken the lines before. And again, getting into that position, little layoff in between the lines. In the final third, Leipzig look to create the classic attacking setup. Five men across the final third, two wingers, two inside forwards, and a centre forward. From this position, they look to combine with short passes, before looking for a through ball or third man run. Alternatively, they'll look to get the ball wide and put a low cross into the box. After a direct dribble from one of the wingers, an overlapping run or even crossing from deep. When starting with a three man defence, RB's wing backs usually provide the width in the final third and become very productive, often even finishing off moves, especially on the left hand side with Marcel Halstenberg. But you can also find forwards and midfielders in those wide areas with the wing backs inside. You have to give Nagelsmann credit for building such a fluid, structured side, with each player comfortable at taking up any position in attack and defence. On to his four-man setup, the principles stay the same. Again, his four-man setup is very difficult to read. The players within the positions changing the nature of the system. But their organisation in defence is outstanding. With a four-man defence, Leipzig defend in a narrow 4-4-2-0, looking to block the passes into midfield. They again look to force their opponents wide, trapping them with a wide midfielder, central midfielder and fullback. Again, operating in a wolf pack. The interesting point here is that the centre forwards will be involved in the press, but they also hold counter-attacking positions, one wide, the other central, which can lead to deadly counters involving Poulsen and Werner, using the former's hold-up play and the latter's electric pace. The stopper cover model is again used in the defensive phase, with one central midfielder pressing aggressively and the other covering the lane behind, a frequent way for Leipzig to win the ball back. Again, this is maintained in defence with the centre-backs, one steps and then the remaining defence narrows, creating a back three. Moving on to possession, the U is maintained with the central midfielders at the base and the wide midfielders moving inside. The idea of maintaining those diagonal passing lanes remains and the use of a target man to lay off to break the lines as well as the pre-mentioned methods. On to attack with a four-man defence, Leipzig maintain that five-man attacking principle, usually made up of the front four and one of the fullbacks. The beauty of Leipzig's interchange causes their opponents a lot of problems. By simply rotating positions creates new attacking structures. One of the most frequent is the interchange of Werner and Feuchberg, moving their shape from more of a 4-2-2-2 to a 4-2-3-1, with a Swedish playmaker at number 10, where he can use his ability on the ball, passing range in the dangerous central area. This also allows Werner to play as a winger, where he has a knack of beating his opponent on the outside and getting a low cross into the box, fulfilling one of the wide positions in the attacking five. The pair have a really good understanding, exploiting Feuchberg's vision and passing with Werner's lightning pace and coolness in front of goal. Nagelsmann is the best young coach in world football and his ability to build such a cohesive unit in Leipzig has been very impressive and will have the opposition managers scratching their head when their team sheets are announced for years to come. But that ability to switch from a four-man to three-man defence back to a four-man defence is a reason why Leipzig are going to massively overperform this season. Anyway guys, I've been Statman Dave. What do you make of Julian Nagelsmann's RB Leipzig? Get into the comments below. Are they the most exciting team in European football? For me, absolutely yes. Smash like, of course, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, why not check out some more content on the Statman Dave YouTube channel?